everyone, this is Emily from BurlapKitchen.com where I'm all about simplicity. Today we're going to be making a reversed canvas. So to do that, the first thing you're going to want to do is take your canvas and a box cutter and cut all, all the way around the staples and just gently peel back the canvas. And the corners take a little bit of extra work. So I'm just going to cut those and keep peeling back the canvas as I'm doing it. Almost finished. And there we go. So then just take the canvas off of the frame and peel all that excess off, the, the stuff that's still sticking on. You just want to peel all of that off. And I do want to note when doing a reverse canvas, you want to make sure you get one of the canvases that have the wooden frame in the back, not one of the flat ones. Okay, now I'm just going to take the frame and I'm going to lay it on the canvas. And I'm going to take a pen and I'm just going to trace all the way around the frame. You can kind of see my line there. So now I'm going to go ahead and just start trimming away all the excess canvas. And you will have to trim this down some more. I just lay it on my frame and kind of get an idea of how much more I need to take off and then just work a little bit at a time until it fits on the canvas. You, if you don't do this, you'll have a little bit of an overlap and you don't want that when you have your, your uh, finished project done, you don't want to see some canvas sticking out behind the back of the frame. Now I'm just using the Apple Barrel acrylic paint and I paint, when I do this, I paint the bright white side of the canvas. I just find that the paint goes on smoother. That's just how I like to do it. And sometimes you will need two coats of paint because sometimes the white does kind of bleed through the darker colors. So I'm just going to dry this really well and you don't want to hold your blow dryer too close or the canvas will kind of almost melt. I don't really know if it melt is the word, but it gives it a goofy shape. So you don't want to blow dry too close. I put my blow dryer on low and hold it up a little. So I just gave that a second coat and now I'm just going to let this coat dry quick. And I do dry my surface where I'm working just so I don't get um, paint on my finished project. So now I'm going to take this homemade chalk paint that I made and just paint my frame with it. This is a little chunkier than normal just because I messed it up when I made it. So usually it's a lot smoother than this, but like I said, I messed it up when I made it. So I just want to make sure that I get all the edges really good and the inside edges good. Anywhere you're going to see, you want to make sure you paint. That looks pretty good to me. So now we're just going to dry this. Now I'm going to take my sanding sponge and I'm just going to rough up these edges. If you all know me, you know I love my grunge look. So this is the best way to achieve that look. I want to make sure I get my sides and all the corners really good. Now. What I'm going to do, I brushed it off just to kind of clean up all the sawdust or the, not really sawdust, to dust from my paint, I should say. So now I'm going to use the Waverly Antique Wax and I dip it in and then I wipe the majority of it off. And then as I start painting, I start where I want it to be the darkest first. So I always start around the edges and the corners with my paint when I take my first couple strokes. So I'm just going to keep repeating this process until I achieve the look that I want. And make sure you get your sides and your insides really good. That looks good to me. Now I'm just going to take my canvas and I'm just going to staple it to the frame. 
I like to tug at it to make sure it's nice and snug as I do this. Make sure to get the corners really good. And I had a staple that didn't go in the whole way, so I just pounded it in with a hammer real quick. Now I'm going to take my stencil. I'm using a Magnolia Design stencil. I'm just going to stick it right in the center of the canvas and make sure I push out all the bubbles. That looks pretty good to me. Now I'm using my Magnolia Designs chalk paste and I'm just going to apply a little bit at the top of this stencil. Less is more with this paste. It really does go a long way. Now I'm just going to take my squeegee and I'm just going to run it over the design. You want to make sure that you get the entire design covered with your chalk paste. And you do have to work sort of quickly because this does dry fast. That looks pretty good to me. Whoops, I just had to get that little piece. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just lift up my canvas very carefully. Just like that. Perfect. Isn't this sign just the cutest? I'm going to quickly run my blow dryer over just to dry all the chalk paste and then we are finished. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more simple craft ideas just like this one, please follow burlapkitchen.com. Thank you.